McConnell's help. First, I'm going to kind of line it up here. Come toward me a little bit. I'm kind of losing there. There we go. Longest neck. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this particular point over your spine, on let's just call it a normal person, <laughs> would be well down into their chest. And you know, the neck is so long. And you don't have that. So first thing I'm going to do is numb up the skin a little bit, okay? okay. So here's a little B. Now we, a lot of numbing stuff, okay? I'm just going to push here just a little bit. The spot I'm going for is so superficial on you. Good grief. <laughs> Normally I'm down about an inch or two. Yours is like a quarter of an inch deep. <laughs> okay. About eight feet. Mm -hmm. Move just a little. It's going to be a little uncomfortable. So. You all right? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a weird feeling, isn't it? It is, but that feeling is where it hurts all the time. Is it really? Yeah. Okay. So it's... All right, now. Now we got the blood coming back. I want to move a little bit here. I don't want to... You all right? Mm-hmm. Okay. I always put, even though I put uh, some contrast in, I put a little test dose of local anesthetic because if it goes in and gets in an artery, I certainly don't want that to go up into your head or yeah. anywhere else. So. so we sit here for a minute, okay? Mm -hmm. thing you want to do too is tilt up there because that shows my little oh, x-ray okay. picture. So that's the contrast that I put in. Cute. You alright? Mm -hmm. Any weird sensations ringing in your ears, metal taste in your mouth, any kind of like that that's brand new that just came on? No. That, that, that tells me if it goes in a blood vessel. Oh yeah, okay? no. Okay, and so that's the one thing I don't want it to do. Yeah. Okay. So again, when I do it, I put in little bits before, because it is going to go in there and it's going to numb up those nerves. Yeah. But like I said, I don't want it to go someplace that's not supposed to go. Right. I'm going to push on here a little bit. I don't want you to bruise up. people do this they put just a pretty good slug in there mm -hmm. what you're actually trying to go is pretty close to I mean it's usually lower than where we can get mm -hmm. like I was telling you, it's usually down inside the chest that right. it has to go so when you put it in it not only goes down but it goes way up and that's where you get the droopy eye mm -hmm. and the weird pupil and all that your neck's so long I can almost go exactly where that I'm supposed to because instead of being down in here, it's actually up here on you. So we don't have to put a, ton, a big slug in there. Yeah. So that's beneficial too, is we don't have to shoot you full. I just sent an email off while you were getting in here 
to the guy that uh, does the prolo. Oh, awesome. He's usually pretty good about watching his email and getting back to me. Thank you. So we'll see what he says about re his resources. Everybody's got their own different contacts, you know, all around. Who they know is he knows Sean pretty well. Talks to him at the meetings because they both lecture at the same meetings right. and stuff. So when I hear about him, he's already, you know, seen him probably five times since I saw him last year. Kind of knows what he's doing with his studies and who's participating and how to get people in and what's locally available right. and all that. So I think he's a good place to start at least. Absolutely. Yeah. And the fact that you're, you know, kind of an activist, you keep in contact with a lot of people, you know, you're yeah. a good person to kind of be a coordinated contact. Absolutely. You still doing okay? Mm-hmm. No big deal. Okay. Now we can kind of tilt up there and kind of see what we're getting as far as I don't know if I can get my gloved hand to do it. No, I can't. Get it to zoom in a little bit. I don't think it will on a video. Mm -hmm. I was going to try to get it to... Yeah, yeah I don't think it's going to do it, so... Oh. All right. But anyway, they can kind of see what the spread is. Yeah. Going down to T1, we're right at T1. So. My neck has hurt so bad for so long. Has it? And just... Now I can feel when I get... When the nerve is what's causing the pain. Mm-hmm. Versus, I had this constant urge to crack my neck. Yeah. Constantly, and which was probably causing me more damage than anything, is that I just felt like I needed to crack my neck all the time. Well, that brings up another issue, too. I just kind of thought of the prolotherapy stuff. When yeah. you read on that, get, actually get on, I'll give you this guy's contact. His okay. name's Dean Reeves here in town. He's in Roland Park. He's got a real good website that has a lot of references because he's kind of a researchy kind of guy and yeah. likes to, you know, info and kind of out geeks everybody a lot, but you didn't hear from me. <laughs> um, there's, there's, their school of thinking is the ligament laxity, like I said, is what causes our problems throughout our body, and then they've kind of gotten into, well, it's doing more to the nerves, too, so we're quieting nerves and we're tightening ligaments to kind of get everything to kind of pull back together. Right. You got somebody with a long neck, you think about it, you know, you got a 10, 15 pound bowling ball on top of a really small thing. It's one thing for a guy with a short, fat neck with a lot of muscles. Right. It's another thing when you got a long, thin stock mm -hmm. about what you're trying to hold on to. And so it doesn't take too much thought to realize that you're probably more at risk of having those problems, right. having neck issues, having disc issues mm -hmm. coming on later in life, a lot more arthritis because the way you're built isn't strong enough mm -hmm. to do that because you're a variant of a long neck versus right. a short neck. So I tend to find people that like getting a car accident and have a whiplash kind of a thing with a long neck tend to have a lot more <clears throat> problems. And those are the people I send to him to have the treatments and they, I think they do a lot, you know, get a lot of relief from wow. headaches and neck stuff. That's and I think he even finds out that that same thing about the vision and the hearing. There's a, yeah. There's a Barret Liu syndrome. That mm -hmm. is, a, is a syndrome that is the central stuff, but the why is it that the neck stuff translates to all the, in, uh, the traumatic brain injury type things yeah. and how it helps out with the prolotherapy and how they're seeing improvement with that. So oh. might be a whole area you might want to look into. I am definitely going to. Yeah. And I think of like, you know, wearing your, the gear on our bodies oh, God, and yeah. the gear, like, that you have to horse yeah, around. Yeah, and then yeah. not only is your, my head already ahead, but then it's Sorry. like the, uh, then you have, you know, headgear on. Just adds to the pressure. Yeah, you have a 200 pound, you know, guy with tons of muscle and carrying the same thing that you're carrying. Yeah. That <laughs> doesn't translate as well, does it? No. Yeah. But yeah, you might look into that too because well, my wife's the same way. She's got a pretty long, thin neck, and she mm -hmm. has migraines. And so her problem is everything triggers the migraines. Yes. So 
ever since she was a little kid, she was having problems with it. Well, until we started doing prolotherapy, they, prolotherapy itself, when they was treating the neck and doing the stellates in front, you know, with, the, with that or deep cervical plexus blocks around the face and the TMJ and everything else, 90% of her headaches have gone away just with that treatment. And I've been working on it for 20, 30 years. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that, that was kind of the thing that was missing. Yeah. Until I went to the meetings, discovered it, followed it along for years, then found him and learned to do some of the stuff and then found the guy that does that kind of a thing. Um, you know, she wasn't getting better with what we were doing, the traditional stuff. But it right. wasn't until we started getting into that that all of a sudden that was kind of a big piece that was missing. That's spectacular. Yeah, it's it like really, really looking at it all holistically, like it's a... Yeah, it, it is. That's and awesome. also looking at it more from a, not just mechanistically of how it's doing, but you're getting ahead of it. Yeah. You know, you're, you're treating, treating it before it happens as a preventative, mm -hmm. um, as well as what the cause is right. of it with the, the best theories we've got right now. Um, instead of just reacting to it, like surgeons, they operate when everything's just total shit. Right. They you know, try to do something to gain you some life back. Well, our thing is, how can we keep you from getting to shit so that those guys don't have as much to Absolutely. do? Absolutely. So that's kind of the thinking with it, and that's what everybody's working on. So, but I think there's a huge piece of it, and you might be well served with that just because of the mechanism behind that yeah. and what you got going on and certainly what you've been through. That's awesome. So go ahead and sit up. How you feeling? I feel, right? feel good, yeah. Okay. And you may not notice as much with the, uh, the eye thing because like I said, I didn't put as much in 